Well, it's Friday again, and you know what time that is, boys and girls? It's Frequently Asked Question Friday. And this time, we're going to be looking at the Canon Speedlight. It's the 600EX2 RT. What I did is I scoured the internet, eBay, Amazon, and our customer service questions, and I looked for the Frequently Asked Questions, 15 of them that are asked about the Canon Speedlight 600EX2 RT. As always, if this video helps you out, don't forget to hit us up with a like button underneath and subscribe to our channel. That way you have access to frequently asked questions, our sneak peeks, our first looks. And as always, if you're ever in the Miami area, come say hello to us at the Digital Goja Showroom. Now, what are the main differences between the 600EX RT version 1 and the new one, the 600EX2 RT? Well, they're very similar. The screens are still nice and bright. Basically, what they did is on the newer version, it now has a faster frame rate so that you can shoot 1.1 to 1.5 times faster with just AA batteries or up to two times faster if you work with the external power source from Canon. There are other alternatives out there, of course. And I'll show you something on the side here. A lot of people asked about this. On the previous version, it had this strange little port here in the corner. This was actually meant so for cameras that were prior to 2012, you link them up here and you could actually fire and trigger your camera from the flash. So you can see that is actually permanently sealed. That's no longer available. So that's not an option anymore. But they, Canon already came to a conclusion that it wasn't being used and it wasn't necessary anyway. And one other feature that they added here is notice on the previous version, you had these two little sensors over here that were meant to change your diffusion when you popped on the diffusion cup, where they made it much more adequate and much better sensing system on here, where you now have these three sensors that will take care of that for you. So there you have what the main difference is between the Canon speed lights in the 600EX 2RT and the original 600EX RT. Does the Canon 600EX 2RT work with T3i or older cameras? Absolutely, any camera that has ETTL or ETTL2 will function perfectly with this. I can place it right up here. Notice how it locks into the shoe. And now I can even set it to as automatic as the full auto and notice how it already knows that I have a 24 millimeter lens on there and as soon as I fire it fires a flash so it does give you perfect synchronization with any of the ETTL or ETTL2 cameras from Canon does the 600 EX2 RT have a USB port for firmware updates no, they don't have that. And if there is going to be a firmware update, Canon suggests that you send the unit back for them for any type of future updates. And they will handle it for you. How do you access the wireless settings on the Canon 600EX2 RT? Very easily. And they made it simple enough. You click on this little icon over here and this is going to bring up your wireless menu and notice how you have wireless off then you have the link shot master individual slave master with these are down here with the little thunderbolt this is using the radio trigger and these over here are using the optical slave now for the link shot this is really cool this is a feature that came into play after 2012 now what you want to do is when you want to get the linked capability which means that now you have the capability of firing up to 15 cameras directly either from the flash or an STE3 RT or from the camera itself that means that 15 cameras simultaneously will be able to fire off at the same time so we're going to go into our custom menu and we're going to go into a the personal function and you want to scroll down to where it says link shot and you want to activate link shot so now that is the master for link shot, and then you can do that with the other units 
you have to always make sure that you go into the flash and activate the link shot system. So that way you can do that and basically control all your cameras and flashes from one camera. What is the zoom range? Well, the zoom range is just like the original version from 20 millimeter to 200 millimeter. I'm going to show you. We're going to go into manual zoom and notice that it's on 20 millimeter and I can zoom all the way up to in different increments to 200 millimeters. And you also have 14 millimeter when you kick on the wide panel and I'm going to show you that. So we have it at 20 there and then I'm going to activate the wide panel and notice how it switches over to 14 millimeters. Can you change the spread of the flash? Okay, we're going to say this, but G-rated. We're going to hold on to the custom function menu, and there it is. So now you can activate that, and you can change the spread of the light depending on which one of these you choose. Does the AF Assist work? And will it work off camera? On camera, the AS Assist will work perfectly in lower light situations. As a matter of fact, it actually works with your 61 point high density reticular AF. So that means you can work with every single point in focusing on your particular camera. But when you take the flash off the shoe, the AF Assist will disengage. How does the flash work with optical wireless system? Works rather well. Again, you'll be able to work with flashes as far back as the 580EX and some other flashes that are on the market that maintain the wireless optical system. But you have to get into the menu by depressing this little one. When you depress this icon, this allows you to now navigate your menu in your wireless mode and notice how the optical is the one that has the little lightning bolt and that means that here you have the capability of again setting it to master slave or individual slave and as I stated before this will work with any existing or previous flash that has the optical slave mode for Canon. How do you set up the wireless flash system using another flash? Well everything is done using your different modes here. So you want to go to master and then you can choose to have it master and you can pick different channels. Remember you can do up to five groups so that means that with this flash on the camera as a primary flash I can then go ahead and go into different channels and groups and change the power ratio or deactivate particular flashes. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn this one on and then I'm going to set this one to slave and then channel one. In turn, when this guy fires off on the camera, this one will see the optical transmission and will also fire. And remember, you can do it in multiple groups up to 15 flashes. Can I turn off the sleep mode? You can turn it off. You can even change the amount of time. So what you have to do is you have to hold down your custom function button and now we're going to scroll all the way down until there's the one for on and off. So when you click on it, you can either activate it or turn it off. But then you can go down a little bit further. And now on this mode, notice how I can tell it to turn off in 10 minutes or in 60 minutes. And then you also have one where you can actually put it to eight hours or one hour if you're working with it wirelessly. So yes, it gives you many different options to deal with your sleep mode. How many custom functions are available? Well, it has 15, even though it looks like the number shows more, and you have six personal function button. So you're gonna hold down this button, which is your custom function button, and now, you're going to start on zero, zero. So that is one of them. That's the one that allows you to change between meters and feet. But notice how you scroll down, make it all the way 
to 13, and then boom, it jumps to 20. But when you count these, you do have 15 here. And then if you hold the button again, notice how it has PFN, which is personal function buttons. So now you activated six. So you have one, two, three, four, five, and six personal function settings. Can you activate and deactivate the flash confirmation beep? Absolutely, but you have to set it in your custom function menu. So you're going to hold that down and then you're going to scroll down to the one that says custom function 20. So notice when you activate that, you have the capability of turning it off or turning it on. So that way you can have some silent shooting and not have that confirmation beep all the time. Can you trigger the flash with a different brand trigger? Of course, here I have a perfect example. This is the Altura Photo wireless trigger set. This is meant to trigger your flash and your camera. It's convenient and economical, and this allows you to now work with off-camera flash without having to use the optical system. Now, again, this is meant to just fire your flash, so it's gonna give you the convenience of using it off-camera and I can go ahead and fire the flash wirelessly. It doesn't have to be line of sight. I could be over 100 feet away. Can I use a non-Canon branded external power supply? Of course, there's that CPE4N from Canon, but that ends up being rather expensive. So guess what? There is another alternative. Now, first of all, you have to look for your power port. This is the port connection for your external power supply right over here. And now, this is what you want to get a hold of, something like this. This one happens to be the external battery adapter from Altura Photo, the rapid fire version. Notice how you're working now with eight AA batteries. And here is your connector port. This is now going to allow you to connect right onto your 600EX2RT. So now you have faster recycling and much longer firing time with the external battery. How do I clear my settings on my 600 EX2RT if I've gone ahead and changed settings in my main menu and in my function menus. Very simply, turn it on and let's say for example that I went ahead and changed it to high speed sync and for example I activated the capability of doing multiple flash exposures whether I want to do some flash compensation and just for giggles let's go into our zoom and I manually set the zoom to 24 millimeters. So you have all this happening here and you need to fix it. You want to get back to the manual reset or the default reset mode. Very simply, you're going to hold these two buttons over here that are linked that say clear. So when you hold them down, there it goes. It switches back to default setting and it tells you because it cleared the menu. Now, let's say for example, you went into your custom function settings and you activated stuff like let's say for example I turned on my modeling or I have the modeling lamp and also the flash activated at the same time and you go back and you go out of the menu well you need to go back into the menu and find that particular menu setting that you did and you have to go ahead and hit the clear button let's say for example I'm just going to do another one we have auto cancel for bracketing, you can turn it on or off, so let's turn that on too. And why not, look at this, let's turn off the AF mode so that we no longer have the AF assist light activating. So you have all this going on and you want to set it back to factory default. All you do is hold this clear button and it's going to ask you, do you want to clear all functions? And you hit OK and there you go. Now you went back to your default setting. Well, I hope this video helped you out. 
If it did, hit us up with a like button underneath and subscribe to the channel. That way you'll have access to future videos on Canon products such as the one you just saw. And keep a lookout for more videos such as the ones next to me. Always subscribe to the channel and share with fellow videographers and photographers. And if you're in the Miami area, come visit our Digital Gojo showrooms. Happy shooting.